Today is Valentine's Day, one of the most popular and most celebrated holidays across the globe. And as you all know, Valentine's Day is all about love. Unless you're single, of course, then it's all about excruciating loneliness. But what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Well, biologically speaking, love is a powerful neurological condition much like hunger or thirst, only more permanent. When you're truly in love, the brain can release a whole set of chemicals. Pheromones, dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, oxytocin and vasopressin. What's interesting about this though is that love is more or less like a drug. Actually, when you're going through a breakup, it's exactly like a drug. Researchers have found that for heartbroken men and women, looking at photographs of their former loved ones, activated regions in the brain associated with physical pain and intense cocaine addiction. In fact, the withdrawal symptoms can be so bad that your body releases chemicals that significantly weakens your heart to the point where you could have a heart attack. You could actually die just by losing someone you love. It's something called broken heart syndrome. In other words, don't do love, don't love and drive. Why do we use this shape to illustrate the heart and love? Actually, why do we use the heart as a representation of love at all? We're not exactly sure why. As far as historians can tell, the very first known depiction of a real heart as a symbol of love dates back to the middle of the 13th century. The use of the heart shape as a metaphor for the heart grew in popularity during the 15th and 16th century. For example, this symbol of Lutheranism was designed in 1530. And this painting is from 1486, illustrating the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Some believe that the heart shape was inspired by leaves, or it might have been one of the many heart-shaped flowers. If you're in a relationship right now, try looking each other in the eye for three whole minutes. Also make sure you have some type of heart rate monitor to observe both of your heart rates. Now something strange should happen. If you're truly in love, your heart rates will begin to synchronize, as in your heart will start beating in almost exactly the same way. How or why this is happening, we simply don't know. The longest married couple in the world married in 1925 and are still married to this day. As of 2015, they have been married for 90 years. If you've ever been in love, you might have felt that it's almost difficult to concentrate on other things. Your mind is so filled with thought of this new love interest, you can't stop thinking about them. It's almost obsessive. Well, this isn't so strange as your brain will have very similar activity to a person with obsessive compulsive disorder. It has actually been proven that in the early stages of a new romantic relationship, people have reduced cognitive control. In other words, you're so consumed by thoughts and feelings of this new person that you become stupid. There's practically a phobia for everything and yes, believe it or not, love is no exception. It's called philophobia and it's the fear of falling in love. You know, I, I think most of us would like to think that the saying bros before hoes holds true in real life. But yet again, science creeps up behind us, stabs us in the back and silently whispers, No fucking way. Purely statistically speaking, falling in love comes at the cost of losing at least two of your close friends. Romantic partners usually absorb time that would otherwise be spent with friends, and thus friendships have a tendency to slowly fade away. Motherfucking science, bitch. If you have a slight headache, it might be worth to just cuddle with your significant other for a while. The reason being that when you cuddle or when you're simply embraced in any way by someone you love, the hormone oxytocin is released and acts as a sort of natural painkiller. Even just looking at a picture of a loved one can be enough to relieve the pain. 
Love is complicated. You can love your family just as much as you can love a good meal, a pet, a friend, a hobby and of course a significant other like on Valentine's Day. This diversity of uses and meanings combined with the complexity of the feelings involved makes love unusually difficult to consistently define compared to other emotional states. Ancient Greeks identified love in a much more organized fashion. They actually used different words to describe different forms of love. For example, love for your family, love between friends, romantic love and divine or unconditional love. The very first step to finding true romantic love is attraction. You need to be attracted to the person before you can love them. And while attractiveness is of course relative to the situation and the individual in question, there's a few common patterns on how most of us assess attractiveness and who we ultimately choose to establish a romantic relationship with. One key point that researchers have found is symmetry. The more symmetrical your body is, specifically your face, the more attractive you are. The general idea is that good symmetry shows that an individual is healthy and will produce healthy offsprings. And while the face proved to be a lot more important than the body, some big factors were hips and shoulders. Women with a waist significantly slimmer than the hips are the most desirable to men. And while the same to a lesser extent is true for men, it's more important to have broad shoulders. Another interesting thing is that love and attractiveness activates completely different regions of the brain. Feelings of romantic love activate regions on the right side of the brain, while looking at someone you find attractive activates the left side. But most important of all, you should not be too much alike or too different, and it seems to apply to all levels, genetics, behavior, appearance and even what you smell like. The idea is that couples who have found a balance between not being identical and not too different are able to learn from each other while also having enough similarities to relate to one another. In other words, scientists have found that love is just as complicated as we think it is.